Yes. Yeah. You <laughs> keep doing? pretty busy, I can imagine. Yeah, no, every day is a holiday. <laughs> well, I guess we can take our topic. Let's talk about uh, being a professor of political science at Central Washington University. Mm -hmm. Most college campuses tend to be classes liberal. A lot of interesting things go on there. Uh, what's it like to be uh, a conservative political science professor? Well, it, uh, at times it can be a wild ride. At some times I have to play it very close to the vest. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, when you say most college campuses are, are liberal, I mean, that's, that's incredibly true. And in fact, it's probably not most, it's all. I mean, you probably, maybe <laughs> Hillsdale College would be the only one, or maybe Oral Roberts. But for some reason, and, and we could talk about this later, uh, universities attract professors who have a very... Uh, um, homogeneous outlook on the world and it's predominantly liberal and when they have a professor who is conservative somebody who believes in limited government uh, who believes in judicial restraint who believes that markets work better than government um, they view it almost as heresy like I have somebody who has turned on the fold in some ways and uh, you know most professors like myself who are conservative usually play it very close to the vest. They don't talk about politics at the workplace. When the, when the discussion gets political, they, they clam up or they leave the room. Well, because they're afraid. They're afraid of not getting tenure. Um, in order to get tenure at a university campus, you have to have the votes, the support mm -hmm. of your fellow academics. And if you've alienated them by coming to work with a Bush 2004 bumper sticker on your car or a <laughs> huge SUV that actually uses gasoline. Whoa. Yeah, I know. Uh, or you have like a Christian fish on the back of your car. Um, then in many university settings, you are risking your career. And if you have a wife or children and you need a job, you can't be as blazon with your political views as, say, uh, the liberal professors who, you know, wear it on their sleeve every day in the classroom. Um, I didn't have that luxury. Uh, two years after moving to Ellensburg, I was elected chairman of the Kittitas County Republican Party, and I write a monthly column for the local newspaper up there, so everybody knows. Yeah, hard to hide your views. No, yeah, I mean, it's like uh, everybody knows that I am a, you know, conservative, so... And you don't want to hide them anyway. In fact, you're very outspoken... Yeah, you get that. Uh, did you I, notice that? <laughs> I've noticed that, and that's great too. So, yeah, do people at your work think it's funny that you're chairman of the Kittitas County Republicans, or do they they kind of look at you a little different? Well, I mean, they it's not unusual for political science professors to become actively involved in politics. What's unusual is when they become actively involved in the Republican Party. So that mm. is you know surprising uh, because. Uh, in the halls of academia, their caricature of conservatives is knuckle-dragging Neanderthals who've never read a book, who reject all science, that, um, you know, have a Confederate flag on the back of their car, two shotguns and a dog, and, you know, uh, <laughs> that's their caricature of all conservatives. And so when they see somebody who's highly educated, who has a PhD, who is articulate, who is published, and they're a conservative, it's just this mental disconnect. Well, hmm, you you are educated and intelligent. How can you be a conservative? I'm like, oh yes, you know, <laughs> there's that open-mindedness and tolerance we hear so much about yes. from the liberal wing of academia. Liberal academics always, tr you know, trump up the idea that they are tolerant, that they are open-minded, that they accept people of all races, all religions, uh, that we need to be open to all different viewpoints, and yet, if you don't agree with them, they can be incredibly intolerant uh, in the name of tolerance, right? Yeah, kind and, of a uh, double standard there. Yeah. It, it almost becomes, in some ways, McCarthyistic in the sense that if you don't agree with the predominant liberal line, then they pull out the McCarthyistic buzzwords. Okay, you don't agree with me, you're a sexist. You don't agree with me, then you must be a racist. If you're not, if you don't agree with me, you're a homophobe, or uh, you hate old people, or you're against the working man. It's just, it's a very labeling, accusatory environment. Now we all know the recent elections uh, kind of had a democratic tide nationwide, and mm -hmm. some different states, parties, yeah. you know, changed power. As we go into this uh, new season of the Democrats ruling, what do you see happening to the family values issues, mm -hmm. and how do you think? Because a lot of these Democrats to get elected had to campaign. 